Hello, welcome to the channel where my friend and colleague James Disdale and I join you with two classic Range Rovers. Different though, aren't they? They are, yes. Uh, as you can probably see, they're, uh, they're a bit resto modded. Mm -hmm. Electro modded? <laughs> they are electro modded. I like that okay. phrase. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so we've got one plug in hybrid and one full electric, and they've both been uh, created by Jensen International Automotive, who mm. I think you'll remember we drove their interceptor in a video. We did, yeah, we did, yeah. James has been to see them uh, where they make them, so uh, we're going to walk around them. He's going to tell me a bit more because he knows more tech detail than I do. They're going to go for a drive. I think we're just going to. I'm just going to enjoy them, I yeah. think. So, yeah, stay tuned. So this is the hybrid. This is the hybrid, yeah. So it is, uh, underneath here is a LT1 mm -hmm. Chevy V8. So 6.2 litres, about right. 470 brake horsepower, which is what you need in an old Range Rover, yeah, I think. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Um, and that drives the rear axle mm. through a traditional torque converter auto. And then there's electric motors that run into what was the transfer case, I think, and then they go to the front axle. Right. So it's internal combustion, rear wheel drive, electric front wheel drive, or... Everything four wheel drive. Yes. That's cool. It is quite a cool system. That's complicated. It is quite complicated, and given they're quite a small company, yeah. to achieve it's a, it's that... It's a lot to take on, yeah, yeah, yeah. I reckon. It's a lot to take on. And you, you can do it on the fly, so you can just switch oh, between cool. the two as yeah. you go. Underneath the passenger seat is a 60 kilowatt hour battery, which... Under the driver's side under the <laughs> under the driver's under side the passenger under seat. the front passenger yes. seat not under the back no so they the, put the, the electric motors around there somewhere too are they in the yeah middle? so they're in the middle effectively right um and the battery is 60 kilowatt hours and they reckon up about 100 miles of electric range so hang on 470 yes horsepower from that yes 200 two electric motors yeah two electric motors about 220 odd combined so 700-ish. Yeah, yeah, about then. Yeah. Again, just what you need in a classic Range Rover. Yeah, it weighs about as much as a thimble by modern SUV standards. Oh, I don't know. Oh, because it's now be... reasonably heavy. Do we it's think? got a lot of battery in there, so I think we're okay. getting on for two and a half tons. Oh, okay. So the chassis. Yeah. Um, got quite a lot of power. So it's, yeah. it's a ladder frame chassis. It's a Range classic Range Rover chassis. Yeah but they've given it their independent suspension setup. So they take the live axles, chop them off either side of the diff, and again at the hub ends, and then they effectively create independent oh, suspension. So it's by double putting, wishbone. By putting like thingy joints. Yeah, thingy joints. Joint. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. that's a technical term. Well, tell me about the electric one too. Yes. Uh, so this then, okay, so, it's like a more classic look. It is a more classic look. Uh, it obviously looks as subjective. Mm -hmm. I quite like this. I mean, it is a cool looking thing in classic Range Rover. It is a nice looking thing, isn't it? It's a nice proportion. It sort is. Sort of thread short at the front. Nice long overhang. Yeah. It's a great... It, they just got it right. Somebody told me the other day, Steve Cropley, our editor-in-chief, told me the other day, and I think it's a true fact, that the engineers basically engineered the car in the first place, yeah. and then they were going to design it, and they just went, let's just leave it. Now, I can't imagine that happening at... JLR these days, can you? No. The no, engineers no. going, oh, we've done the new Range Rover. And Jerry going, that's it, I like that's it. That's it, love it. Leave I it. don't want to do anything with that, lads. Leave it. <laughs> Leave it. Anyway, classic Range Rover. Yes. Uh, so this is... What, what's it? Are the motors here? No. So there's a big Brilliant. battery underneath here. Right. And then there's another battery underneath the boot floor, okay. which combined gives it 120 kilowatt hours That's big. of energy, which is quite That's big. A lot of battery. That's a lot of battery. Because so, the BMW i7 has got, what, 110? 100, 8? 108, 100, something like that, yeah. So, so 120 is a lot. It's, it's a big, it's a big, big old battery. Hour. Yes. But uh, in optimal, optimal conditions, they reckon 250 miles, daylight mm -hmm. today, which is February, cold, wet. Yeah. Yeah, that phase. Yeah, that phase. Yeah, yeah. It's that sort of day. It is early February. It's been hosing down all morning. It's yeah. what three degrees, I would guess. Yeah. I you, keep putting my hands in my pockets. So I apologise. Uh, condition. About two hundred miles. They reckon that's easy two hundred miles, that's which I good. I think it's really good. Yeah. For something that's got this amount of aerodynamic efficiency. Yeah. Exactly. I.e. none. Yeah. That powers three electric motors. Yep. So you've got two driving the back axle. Right. And one driving the front axle. They're all on all the time, are they? There's no... Yes, so there's, there's no... No, there's a 60-40... Fanning around. It's just what it is. Yeah, 60-40 rear front torque split. Okay. Obviously, because the, the, there's only one motor at the front. Yeah. 
uh, and they're geared slightly differently as a result. Okay. Um, but they drive just straight into the diff. So one speed. One speed. Done. That's it. Uh, and it's about 600 and something horsepower. They're getting back to me with the exact figure, but it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a they're lot. Still ca- they're still working it out. Yes. Yeah, it sounds a bit harem scarum that amount in a classic Range Rover. Yeah. Um, but. Has this I got think, the. And this has got live axles, has this, it? So this is like. This is standard. Ah, it's standard Range Rover chassis. Yeah. So it's ladder frame. Right. Live axles, but it has air suspension. Ooh. Air springs. Yeah. Ooh. Which is at the request of the, the customer. Gotcha. Cool. Right, so, how do you want to do it, mate? Do you want to drive. One, I'll drive the other. The world is your lobster, whichever you oh, fancy. Right. Well, I've I've spent some time in this one. You yeah. haven't, so maybe yeah. you should drive that one. Okay. And then I'll drive that one. Yeah. And we'll have a chat. Yeah. Uh, we're just going to sort of a review, but it yeah. kind of doesn't... I just think if... Because somebody's spending, what, 450000 yeah. or something? Pounds yeah, on, so, this sort of thing. Cheap. So it's kind of... I think review would be overstating because yeah. we're just going to see what they're like. Basically. See what they're like. Uh, they're like. We'll, we'll sort of chew the fat over the yeah, state over of the, the electro whole mod, the electro mod scene, scene where mm. these fit in. Because I think, I think you've dri- have you driven another electrified Range Rover? Or is that have I driven an electrified Range Rover? No, uh, okay. but I have driven a, a very cool resto mod Range Rover. Uh, the and Kingsley, I've driven an electrified Porsche three five six. Okay, which so... has a standard four speed gearbox. Anyway, yes, we'll go for a drive. We'll see what we think. Good, excellent. You're supposed to see the point where the hands meet. Oh. That's why they do it that way. And oh, then no. the clapper board, you'd go frame, frame, oh. bang, and that would mix with I the clap. I didn't know that. No, I didn't. Richard Hammond told me that. Did he? He did. Because I did a clap and he went, have you it's done all right, po- but it wasn't. Have you done a podcast with Richard Hammond? <laughs> can people listen to that? They can, mate. Excellent. Do you know where they can listen to that? Where can they listen to they it? They can listen to that at their favourite podcast provider. Oh, where? Wherever they get their podcasts. It's called My Week in Cars. It sounds good. Who it's else, also who else available pro- on YouTube, mate. Is it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, and that's that you one. and... It's me and Steve Cropley, our right. editor-in-chief, yep. presenting our weekly podcast, My Week in Cars. Have you listened? I have. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. That's and I recommend anyone watching this go immediately... From wherever you get your podcasts. Yes. Wait until you finish watching this, please. Yeah, ideally. Right, let's see if we can get... Uh, let's, see should we do this, s- let's do this in... Let's see if this will start. That's... Come on. So that's part. There it goes. Oh! Oh, and it's all about it. Yes! We're, a, we're in. I love that sound. It is lovely, isn't it? I know this is, you know, it's all about hybrid and electrification. Yeah, but... but frankly, V8s, they're pretty good, aren't they? I don't mind, right. I don't mind them, I've got to say. Okay. So, can I pop to there, look. See, now I discovered that earlier. I'm quite excited by this because this is a soft dash, so this is a late classic Range Rover. You know quite a lot about your classic Range Rover. <laughs> cup holders. Cup holders. That was, un- I mean, surely that was unusual, was it? Was um, it unique? I don't know about unique, but it's unusual, isn't it? Because it's uh, got a bit one of soft dash, 93 ish. That's quite an early cup holder. That is an early cup holder. But then they would have been. I d- I'm afraid I bow to your superior oh. knowledge of. All I'm thinking when the was, soft dash arrived. Yeah, all I'm thinking is that was around the time the Cherokee arrived in the UK, wasn't it? The Jeep. XJ Cherokee. Is that the one, you know, the, the, the square rig Jeep yeah, Cherokee? Yeah, that people love. Yeah, yeah. The one that uh, Bosch has on Amazon Prime. Have you seen Bosch on Prime? I haven't seen Bosch on You recommended this, oh, I've still not watched it yeah, yet. Well, get around it. Thank you, I will. Um, they had cut anyway. They well, had I don't know whether they, they? I don't know, but they were American, and the Americans, I think they were the they, pioneers of the cup. Yeah, and I don't yeah, know whether this is an American market me. thing. Soft dash. That's oh, I see. And this is a left hooker, isn't it? Yeah. And it's from California. This it car. is an American market car. Yeah. Uh, so, what are we going to talk about? Well, the, you know what I like is the fact that we've got into a bespoke, handmade plug-in hybrid yes. resto mod yeah. and we've just driven off down the road talking about the Bosch and, left and cup holders and yes. what have you it's a it's a it's normal is it? I mean is it well you tell me what, is it normal? it is normal I mean it's given how much is going on here so these are a group of people in a large shed in Oxfordshire yeah. and I don't mean that in the pejorative sense um, you know, it's, tr- it's a, fact, a true fact yeah and they, they, they're they upfront about that Yeah. so they've engineered a petrol engine an electric motor 
and then integrated it with a gearbox, a battery. So you've got two different drivetrains and it works quite well. So we're in hybrid mode at the moment, as you can probably tell, the engine. So, I mean, it's not, it's not clever, clever like a Prius where it's constantly managing the energy flow. Right, okay. So it doesn't, so if we're in hybrid mode, it oh, won't, so it if won't, you're in hybrid won't, mode, the engine's on. It's always on. What you've got is electric power and internal combustion engine power. Right. So it's not that clever. Yeah. But it's it works really quickly. So if we switch this little flip this here, so we're now in electric mode. Let's just cut the the internal combustion motor, and it, you know it's pretty cool. It's so now it's front wheel drive. So it's now front wheel drive. But it has still got 270 yeah, yeah. horsepower, something? Yeah, 60. and in these wet conditions it can get quite lively because, <laughs> as we demonstrated earlier, you know, it, it'll spin up the wheels, but you yeah. have to provoke it. Right. So, you know, it's it works quite well. And the, well, the one thing I like about this one is this double wishbone suspension thing they've done, which is, when we step into the electric one, you probably noticed already, just the low speed ride is a lot, lot better. In this? Yeah, it's more controlled. Yeah. Because you know what live axles are like. We've both got old defenders. We've both got old defenders with live axles. Yeah. They're not the most refined rides in the world. I think this is, this is a, again, for a, a hand-built, effectively at the moment, one-off yeah. creation. It's not bad. Yeah. You know. It's. It does still feel like an old inverted commas car, doesn't yes. it, to an extent? Yeah, and I yeah. think that's what you've got to remember is if you start trying to compare it to a modern plug-in Range Rover, yeah, with yeah. millions and millions of pounds of R and D spent on it, yeah. it's it's not going to be that. But it's not it's not upsetting, is it? As you say, we've just got in it. You get in it, turn the key, drive on away you go, and it's jobs are good. Un. And you know, you, you've got this lovely view out front with a little castellated. Is that the right oh, word? Castellated? The ends of the, uh, the bonnet. Oh, is that? Like, like castellations on a castle. Oh, on a castle. On a, ca on a castle. Uh, These little bits at the end. Oh, yeah, I'll take your word for it. I don't know, I've just made that up. I'm, no, I'm, I'm, well, I'm, I'm for it. Yeah, okay. little pillars, we sit high and tall, yeah. and the view out is easy. Yeah. Because it's, it's still a biggish car, I suppose, by even modern standards. Yeah. But you wouldn't doesn't feel big on this road, does it? No. I mean, I've driven new Defenders in this area yeah. quite a lot, and they feel like a much bigger car than this feels. Hey, and they, they feel you know, and look, the, you know, the window line is down by my elbow. Yeah. We said, we suddenly, funny enough, Steve Brockley and I talked about that the other day. On your... On our, on our podcast, oh. like My Week in Cars, mate. And Excellent. He, yeah. And he's, because he was looking at a classic Range Rover, potentially to buy it, and he said, oh, okay. but of course the window line is down by your elbows, and I thought he was exaggerating, and he's not, it literally yeah. is down by my elbow. So I'm going to now put it back into. Uh... Ah, there we go. That's better. That's, the mad thing is hearing it. Oh, well, oh, hello. It's, uh, we got a bit, bit, bit. It just had to uh, engage. Is it re-engaged? Genuinely, that's the first time it did that. I think it okay. was just it getting itself. Because the modern, the modern start-stop plug-in hybrid. Yeah. Quite often, sort of start stops with a, sometimes with a, depending on the car. Sometimes with one of a drive set of drive motors, doesn't it? Yes. It will use a integrated yeah. starter generator yes. to a torque fill and B start the engine and stop. But this is just winding itself over then on the standard starter motor. Yes. And then trying to pick up the match it all up match again. It all up. Which is quite a complex thing to do. Really hard thing to do. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I'm I thinking think, about. It. Sorry. I was going to say I think they've done it remarkably well yeah. given what it is, an old yeah. Range Rover and some people in a shed. So they've done, my understanding is they've done about 50 of these Jensen conversions yes. slash yeah. restos, whatever you want to, whatever they what you would call them. This is the only one of these so far? Uh, I believe so, yes. And there's only one electric one so far? So far. I like the fact it's a right, state, of, state of charge, 55%. It's showing the battery voltage and ampage. It's, it, you've got clear dials over there with the fuel gauge on. I mean, that's really, it's all clear. It's all very, it all works. 
Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I don't want to sound surprised at that, but no. I, how easily and well integrated it seems to be. Well, it's, it's little details like these dials, they're obviously aftermarket dials, mm. but aftermarket dials now are quite good. It's not like the days when Lotus were nice. throwing them in a, an Esprit and it looked. Yeah, they look good. Yeah. Yeah, they look good. And the green backlight is sort of a Land Rover ish kind of green backlight, too, isn't it? So I really like that. And because it's all. Uh, is it can? A uh, can bus or something like that, is it? Yeah. Because it is, they can they can customise all oh, the I digital see. displays, yeah, yeah. which is quite neat. Yeah. Um, this steering wheel, I really like. I really like that steering wheel. That is really nice. So apparently, it's 3D printed the rim no. in six pieces, and then they bond it all together, and then they machine this three That's spoke, cool. and it's it's inspired by the original Range Rover steering wheel, which when you look at it, you'll see. Oh, I see. Yeah. I like it very much, mate. I do. Uh, I, I like the, the electric one. Yeah, because I really want to go. I Well, let's so do let's it. let's try then. it. And then we'll... Um, I, take, I don't know what conclusion we'll make. I, I, think that I don't know. Before we get in the electric yeah. one, because we won't be able to hear this in the electric one, should we just... Sounds quite nice, doesn't it? I like your... Uh, there's, there's a I'm lot sorry. going on. There is a I'm lot going sorry. on when you do it's that. It's just that it all it yeah, moves yeah. around a bit. I'm like, oh, crikey, that surprised me. But it's got it's doing the electric motors. I I do want you I've to know that. No idea why. This is, you know. But I, no, I genuinely do. I'm just a. I just. I'm a. I'm li all I can hear in my head is screaming most of the time. I don't know what I'm doing. How loud is an electric? Not very. No. I like this. It is, it is quite nice, isn't it? Yeah. This is quite good fun. Steer is quite medium weighted, isn't it? But it's I I a bit too heavy? I would for me, my personal taste, given the vibe of the car, yeah. so easy going electric, high riding SUV, I'd have it lighter. This has got a quicker I don't want to say rack, because it's not a rack, is it? Whatever it's got. It's a steering box. Yeah. But it's the it's the quicker steering. I've still got the old old school light switches and made of chocolate apparently. But it, uh, it's all over the Defender forums. Oh, is that I, right? I the light switches. Yeah. Oh, there you go. They're a, they're they're a consumable item apparently. Yeah. So this is still running live axles. So yeah, live axles, but air springs. Which was only ever an option, I think, on the long wheelbase soft dash. Oh, stop it. <laughs> the, uh, Who won the 1988 Tour de Course? Uh, it was Bernard <laughs> Bagua. Right. Oh, no, it wasn't. 88 Tour de Course was Didier Oriel in the Sierra RS oh, Cosmos. Oh, yeah, sorry. 87 was Bernard Bagua. Oh, I can't believe I got oh, believe one year out. I got sorry. sucked into that. Sorry, mate. I didn't uh, mean to suck you into that, so just speak. The only world championship success for the Ford Sierra Cosmos. It's all right. Uh, on, yeah, Group A. Only one once. It's quite quick, isn't it? It is quite quick. <laughs> uh, but it has AP not... brakes, doesn't it? Yes. Yes. Yeah. AP brakes or ABS brakes? AP racing brakes. It does have AP brakes. Does it, other, do they have ABS? That's a very good question. Should we find out? I think it might be an idea, might right. it? Three, Ready? two, one. No. No, it doesn't. But it, you, quite a lot of pressure. It's a lot and of pressure. And it stopped. It stopped really nicely. Yeah. Yeah. Very happy with that. I mean, I would not worry about that. No, that was that is cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because it's quite heavy. It's getting on for two and a half tons, I think. Is it? Because it's a lot of battery. It's a lot of battery. One hundred and ten-ish. What was it? One hundred twenty kilowatt. It? Yeah. Pheasants. Oh. oh, they're so dim. Look at that. Come on. There we go. He's going to land on the road. <laughs> there he goes. No, he's gone. Okay. Now he's going to step out again. I'm sort of quite enjoying it. It's, I think it's done quite well. Now you've you've had a few electro mod experiences. Resto mods, electro mods, yeah. etc. Yeah, and uh, are you clear this way? Well, the thing is, mate, is that they never feel because they are done, and even if they're done by even the best resto mods, done by a large team of people, they're never done. To the same standards, no EM. No. Because you can't, you can't, you can't do it. The best sort of niche sports car 
in the world, something like an aerial atom, has finish of an OEM that an OEM would be that most OEMs would be, be proud yeah. of. But it's so difficult to do that yeah. stuff, isn't it? I think and it's they, so hard to do that and do it well. They're a relatively big team, and yeah. they. And it's a relatively simple car. Yeah, let's be honest. You know, do you know what I mean? You could just go, yeah, well, we'll make that out of bullet aluminium because it's 60 grand and there's not many bits on the car. Fine. Yeah. But this is, there's a lot to do in this car. So actually, the fact that it feels as good as it does yeah. is, I think, pretty impressive. You've got to remember, it's still a classic Range Rover at the end of the day. And this is the only one, so it's still sort of a prototype to an extent. I mean, the amount of software engineering oh, they said I, they've had to do is it's mind-blowing. That's what I can't do, because I'm thinking about doing an engine swap to my Hill Mini. Oh, yes. Because people do a BMW K1200 bike engine conversion. Yeah. Really nice. nice. I've, talked, I've, I've bored you about this already. <laughs> Not bored me, you've fascinated me, and I'm, I'm, what I want <laughs> to say so is... Polite. He's so polite. Get on with it. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I know. I, anyway, I, yeah. All right. I will. It's coming. Sorry, that was a bit aggressive. I didn't mean no, to be quite no, so. No, you're right. No, you're right. I, I, but anyway, that is not an insignificant job, and it's just taking one very simple wiring loom, replacing it with another, and putting an engine in a place where it pretty much fits already. The trouble to go to with this, particularly the plug-in hybrid, is just a mind-blowing amount of stuff that you've got to do. So how do you make, how do you feel in general about the electro or the electrified restored? Well, it, I it's difficult, isn't it? it it's obviously it's going to extend the life of some classics. Um, it's a contentious issue. There are some classics that are very well suited to it, I think. So I drove the Lunares. Oh, did you? Rolls Royce. Did you? Phantom. Yeah. Which made perfect sense yeah, yeah, yeah. because they were always aiming for silence. Yeah, I mean, had they Excellent. been able to do it, yeah. maybe they'd have done it themselves. Yeah. And it kind of suited the character of the car. You don't want to drive that car fast. Mm. Um, you're not missing the three-speed yeah, three torque speed converter. Order. You're yeah. not going to miss that clumsily yeah. and lazily changing gear. So it really suited the car. And, and I'd argue to an extent it really suits something like this. Yeah. The, the, the Lunars people, when I went yeah. to see them, yeah. they said over 80% of the people buying their cars mm -hmm. are new to classics. They've never bought a really? classic before. They've only got, like, of the cars they had in build, like two of the customers were classic car owners. Oh, that's interesting. And it's a, it will attract a new audience. I think it works well for some cars, less so for others. Yeah. How about you? I think there are a lot of cars I wouldn't do it to. Yeah most cars I wouldn't do it to. I think there's a few cars it suits really, really well. But yeah, there's quite a lot of cars I wouldn't do it to. I, I wouldn't do it to a Ferrari Testarossa because, you know, they named the car after the engine. Do you know what I mean? If you're, if you're not having the engine in a Testarossa, why are you having one? I mean, I know they, I know they look good and everything, but, but... Are you talking early Testarossa or wedgie uh, Miami Vice Testarossa? Oh, wedgie Miami Vice. Yeah. Think, Excellent. Yeah. Um, but do people do it to early ones? I do, yeah, I think it was an earlier Testarossa, wasn't there? No, but do they electrify those? Oh, God, no, I hope not. Yeah, exactly, see, that exactly what did. But ultimately, if it's reversible, and most of the time it is, it's not my car. And I think that about, you know, I think that about so many things, and I, and I think about my cars which are all modified to an extent. And people might go, oh, you shouldn't do that. No, don't. Tell me you don't like it, that's fine. You could not like it, but don't tell somebody else what they can and can't do with their own car. Because it's theirs. True point. My dream. This is. Do you I know think, what I mean? Yeah. But, but I like this a lot. Actually, we do need to finish one line. We do need to say, we do need to discuss one last thing before is we it, finish. Is it your weekly podcast? No, mate. Oh, no. okay. Unsurprisingly, it's, surpri surpri surprisingly, it's not. Um, how much does this cost? It's quite a lot, isn't it? Mm. I'm going to let you tell them. I think, well, I, I think it probably, you know... It's like how long is a piece of string yeah. element to it, but I, my understanding, because they spend like four thousand hours doing it, and that is quite expensive. It's about a four hundred and fifty thousand pound project, all told. So you've got to have a lot of money to want to do it. Do yeah. you see four hundred and fifty grand's worth of value when you compare it to, say, a Rolls Royce spec to exactly the same price? That's a really tough question, isn't it? Because 
I guess the people that buy that know that it's a one-off. No one else is going to have a Range Rover quite no. like this. No. And there's also an argument that Gwyneth Paltrow, there you go, you weren't expecting that. So Has she, she is, No, she hasn't. But didn't she start this kind of no logo almost? You're so wealthy now. Oh, the clothes you wear, they're all kind of topes and browns right. and, and there's no logo. You're not shouting about your wealth in the same way. Yeah, yeah. And there is something about this, I guess, that will appeal to someone. Yeah. Lots of people look at it and go, that's just a nicely kept old Range Rover. Mm. And you will know it's a very expensive, hand-built, yeah. electric-powered Range Rover and you'll feel good about it yeah. in that way. And a Wraith or... Well, sorry, what's the electric one called? It's a Spectre. 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 It's it is. It's a Spectre. Really. It is Spectre. Yeah. It went straight out of my head. That projects a very different yeah. kind of thing, doesn't it? Yeah. So it's a very tough question, yeah. but... If you want one. And you can afford fine. it. You can afford it, fine. And if you... It's done nicely. Yeah. And if, yeah, if you wanted it, and I, I would not be disappointed if this is what I wanted. Yeah. Well... Is well, that a verdict? That's a verdict of oh sorts. My God. So, yes, thank you for... I'm going to turn around. Uh, no, they, they did suggest that perhaps wading it wouldn't be a good idea at the moment. At the moment. So I don't think that's been part of the development cycle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it doesn't, because apparently it's DC and it's 800 volt. OK. So for that, it effect, because of DC, it effectively acts as a muscle contractor. Oh, yeah. So we made a joke on the Mark Weekly Cars podcast oh, about, yeah. about somebody being blown across the workshop if yeah. they get stuck I think, but somebody wrote in and said no actually what would happen is you would get stuck to whatever the electricity <laughs> which is why in, in EV know. development workshops well in all electric yeah. workshops they've got a big plastic pole to pull people off of things if they get <laughs> See, the, it seems a very high tech solution that doesn't it yeah. imagine the high tech world of EVs yeah, you Aston, if, you to, if you go to the Aston Martin development workshop yeah. there is a, 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 any EV development workshop there'll be a big plastic pole with a hook on the end to yoink, yoink people off stage you are going to need to touch him with a 10 foot barge pole. Is yeah. that uh, anyway? Anyway, that, we got a verdict so, yeah. of sorts. So, thank you for joining us. Uh, James and I will be back with more nonsense at some point in the very near future, I hope. Um, there's lots of videos here. You can find us over at autocar.co.uk. You can find the My Weekend Cars podcast or wherever you get your podcasts. We'd love an up thumb and a subscribe to this channel very much. See you next time. <laughs>